This is just the effects of it. This is the effects. This becomes the effects of your consciousness. So since we know this is not money, what makes this evil, what makes it righteous, is the intention of it. Because money, as we know it, is a neutral force waiting for your intent. It's the intention. So, when you become wealthy, what is your intent? Because it's the intent that either makes it righteousness or it is your intention that makes it evil. And if you have evil intentions, then you have moved into the love of money. If you've had godly intentions, then you have moved into the love of God. And that is where your money starts to become God in action. I love it when I come up here. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is deep. The fall was all about the love of money. I'm just getting this. The fall was all about the love of money because what uh, Eve thought she was purchasing was uh, life and wisdom. So uh, money becomes what you money becomes good or evil according to what you purchase with it. The scripture says, "Buy the truth, sell it not." Right. So what Eve was doing in the garden is she wanted wisdom, which is monetary, which is truth, which is value, and she wanted to buy truth with the God of Mammon rather than purchasing purchasing truth from God. So the whole fall in the beginning was the love of money which in God's terms is the love of wisdom and knowledge. And when that love of money comes outside of Christ, it becomes anti. Christ. Because anti doesn't mean against. Anti means a substitution. Instead of. Or instead of. So Eve, uh, the, the love of wealth, which it, at the end of the day is wisdom, and truth, the love of that wealth, uh, the love of that wealth in an illegal way is, is, is eventually what caused Eve to fall in, in the garden. Because the serpent said, you'll know, you'll know good from evil. And you'll, you'll, uh, so see, there was argument about what, she was, what the exchange was going to be between him and her. Mm. Mm. What's going on in your mind? Hmm. No, I'm just concurring. Because see, when you begin to also understand that Eve, she tried to buy something in the outer wor world. Notice it was the lust of the eyes. Mm -hmm. She allowed that objective world to become more real than her spiritual world. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many times do we look at a house or a car or we do, I'm gonna tell you what the love of money is. The love of money is when you do things you can afford. When you do things that does not require faith, you have moved into serving mammon instead of serving God. Because God never tells you to do things that is within your means. Listen, cross the Red Sea. That's not within your human means. That is God. So godliness is when you're doing stuff that is not within your means. Like, for instance, my wife tells me, says, um, well, we got a $92,000 credit bill we got to meet. We got bills over here. Yeah, but I heard God saying, go, in, go on television. So you know what? Our television expense is going to increase. We're going to a couple of more networks. I'm visiting a couple of others. That's going to be now. We need to believe for an additional 80000 a month. Well, we, we have these bills here. I know that's mammon but we got God here and that's faith. 
And so what happens is, as long as you get into a budget, you demonstrate that you don't love God. When you start living in a budget, you never hear the prophet going to anyone that was in a dilemma and set them up on a budget plan. It throws them in a deeper hole than the hole they're already in. All I have is a handful of meal in the pot. My son and I is going to eat it and die. The widow woman at Zarephath was poisoning her son to death with the budget. And the budget will always poison you, strangle you. It wasn't until the prophet removed the good that was in her pot and consumed it in her face that her miracle began. So as Prophet Connie Williams is sharing this thing about, you know, having two choices to make between God and money. What's those two choices? You got to make a choice whether you're going to live by faith or in a budget. If you're living by a budget, then mammon is telling you, you can do this today, you can't do that today, you can't do the $10 seed today because that's not within your budget. You know there's revival every night this week, but you do your tithes and offering, you don't do nothing else.